A tie, a tie, yes, a tie. The Bengals tie the Falcons 13 to 13 in preseason game number two. And from the quarterback battle to Jackson Carmen to a ton of other stuff, including the defensive starters and Jonah Williams, let's get into all of our takeaways from tonight's preseason action. Hi again, everyone, and welcome in to Cincinnati Bengals Talk. I'm James Rapine of AllBengals.com. Hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and happy preseason. Two games down, one to go as we record this, 23 days until the start of the regular season. I can't wait. You can't wait. I know Andrew Fox Miller can't wait. And guess what I can't wait for? Joe Burrow to be under center again. Am I right? And I'm not trying to rip on the quarterbacks, but... When Jake Browning threw that interception late in the fourth quarter, it was like, oh, my God, can it get any worse? And he responded the right way. And that's my first takeaway instantly. And the game ended about five minutes ago in Atlanta. Jake Browning, for the first time, really in camp for either of these quarterbacks, responded the right way after facing some adversity, after struggling a bit. Because both of these guys, Trevor Simeon started four for four, Browning started three for three and four for five. And and these guys got off to good starts, but it didn't last. At least it didn't last for Simeon who finished seven for 14 in the first half Browning leading the go ahead drive with just over two minutes to go, gets the ball after an ugly interception. And he says, okay, I'm going to complete a pass. And then a second pass. And then a third pass back to back runs that uh, for 33 yards that put the Bengals in good position. Then he finds Andre Yosevash, nice catch by the young rookie for an 18 yard gain. And two plays later, Chase Brown was in for six and the Bengals looked like they were going to escape Atlanta with a win 13 to 10. The fight, the Falcons drove down field to, to tie the game. And ultimately it was a tie, but what Jake Browning did five for five on that drive, it, it's uh, it was really good to see. And it was one of those games that you you wanted to see one of these quarterbacks emerge. And I'm just looking at some of these these numbers from Browning. So he finished 16 of 22 for 140 yards and an interception. And he had 47 yards on that final drive. So five for five for 47 yards, 33 more yards rushing. That's what you wanted to see. Someone flashed a bit. So if I had to give you an answer on who's the backup quarterback today, it's Jake Browning. Should they be looking outside of the organization for QB2? Maybe, but at least he flashed a little bit. So that's the first takeaway. Jake Browning showing a bit of what he can do. He's limited physically, but he's certainly mobile enough. We saw that. And and even though he doesn't have great arm strength, he knows where the ball is going. And he just cannot make bad decisions like he did on that interception. And if he doesn't do that, I think he's going to win this backup quarterback job. Let's get to some other takeaways here because there are a lot of takeaways. Let's go way back to the first quarter. And it feels, feels like ages ago, the Bengals first team defense gets challenged. And I love this. And I didn't want to hype it up this week, but I thought like Des Ritter, B. John Robinson, Drake London, like Kyle Pitts, they have guys and you haven't seen this offense before. And it, it looks a little different. And I know there's questions about Ritter, but overall, the, the Falcons had the Bengals defense on their toes a bit. And London had a really nice catch on the sidelines. Pitts had a nice one-handed grab. Bijan Robinson's first NFL run looked strong. And so my takeaway was, okay, well, how are the Bengals going to respond? How is this defense going to respond? And they responded the right way. The Falcons shot themselves in the foot with a couple of false starts after getting a first and goal at the four, and it backed them way up. And after that, they got back down to the eight. And then the Bengals did uh, what this defense has done so often over the past couple of years. First off, Dax Hill on second down, tackling Bijan Robinson in the hole, coming up, making a play against the eighth overall pick. It's exactly what you like to see from Dax Hill. So he's made multiple nice plays now this preseason. And then the, the, the next play, Mike Hilton comes in, times it just right, maybe a little early, but just right because you didn't get called and gets the ball batted up in the air, and Joseph Osai, right place, right time, makes the interception. That's what you want to see. I was encouraged by that performance uh, of this defense. 15 plays. You could have easily mailed it in, 
there were multiple penalties in there where it was more than that, but 15 plays and they were probably gassed and yet they found a way to make a play. I love it. I love that response by Luana Rumo's crew. And then on offense, I try to tell you most offensive starters wouldn't play. I did hear a little birdie told me that Jonah Williams was going to start and he played the first series. It was a 10 play drive, which was nice. Like I said, Trevor Simeon got off to a decent start and a 10 play drive. I thought Jonah looked good. I thought he was solid in pass protection, solid in the run game. Was he, you know, this dominant all pro guy? No, but he was good. And that's exactly what you want. You don't want to notice 73. You don't want to notice any of the starting offensive linemen, essentially what would be my goal week in and week out. And that's what he did. And I think that it was really good work. And those that have heard me or seen me talk about Jonah Williams' training camp performance, well, now you know where that comes from. Now you know where that comes from. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm excited to see how he continues to grow at that right tackle spot. But obviously an impressive start tonight for Jonah Williams. And like I said, it was just one series, but it was well worth it. Other takeaways, the rookie wide receivers. I like that Charlie Jones got into a rhythm in the third quarter. At one point, had three straight catches. One was nullified by a holding penalty. He's going to continue to get better and better, folks, and look more comfortable. I think he's working through that shoulder issue a bit and learning how how to play with it. I don't think there's really anything you can do either. I think it's one of those things where, yeah, he could not play, but it's still going to be the the exact same as it is right now. It's not like he's he's hurting it by playing. So to me, he, he's getting more and more comfortable and finished four receptions, 34 yards. Andre Yosevash just continues to show those flashes, had five catches for 44 yards on 10 targets, but there were a couple that were really close. Back shoulder, he could have caught and he didn't, but he fought back and, and fought through a defensive pass interference call to catch a 16-yarder in the third quarter. Then he had the 18-yarder from Jake Browning on that final drive, which was really nice. So encouraged by him, Shedrick Jackson, four targets, four catches for 42 yards. He showed off his speed a bit, would have had another catch too, but Charlie Jones was called for uh, an illegal pick. I thought Chris Evans looked uh, pretty solid overall. The Bengals run game did not, but I, Chris Evans in space, we know what he can do there. The Bengals ground game was just awful, just awful. And, and so without further ado, let's get to the offensive line because I think Jackson Carmen. Rough, rough. He played left tackle for most of the game. And during the fourth quarter, switch with Deontay Smith. Smith went to the left tackle spot, Carmen to the right tackle. Have to, to rewatch it again. Got called for a holding penalty. He struggled uh, during some of the snaps I watched. Others looked pretty good, but it was the normal inconsistency that I think knocked Carmen down. And, and that's been an issue uh, for him, obviously, throughout his three years here. Uh, so we will see how that goes. Uh, defensive line wise, I thought a lot of guys stepped up. I mean, Raymond Johnson, the third made a play multiple plays. Actually, Jeff Gunter made multiple plays. I, I think that uh, this defensive line has a chance to be really good. I mentioned Osai already, you, you know, those, those are guys that are on the bubble that I'm mentioning making plays. So to me, it was a successful night all around. Now the tie is brutal. I mean, I, I hate ties. I also get it in preseason. There shouldn't be overtime. They, I, it almost should be that the Falcons should have had to kick like eight more yards behind where they were. And if they make it, they get four points for the field goal or something. So someone wins because who cares who wins and who loses uh, a preseason game. That said, speaking of kicking, Evan McPherson continues to be money Mac. He's that dude. And six for six now made a 50 yarder tonight and a 31 yarder made the extra point as well. Really, really solid performance by him. And then there may be some wondering where Miles Murphy is. Miles Murphy was sick and missed practice on Wednesday due to an illness and did not play. I, I don't believe he made the trip either to Atlanta with the Bengals because of that illness. So it's unfortunate. He needs those reps. He needs those snaps. But uh, it, it was intriguing to watch these other guys as well. And a guy like Cam Sample, for example, I thought he looked solid in his snaps. Now, he wasn't out there a ton. But early on in this game, I'm like, man, he can be a difference maker. He can make an impact this season. And there are a lot of guys like that. I thought DJ Turner looked good against Drake London. London had that nice catch against him. Turner was in great position. Just wasn't able to knock it away. I understand it. Uh, overall, 
I, I was encouraged by a lot of what I saw tonight. Uh, again, things are going to go wrong or go bad. It's going to be ugly at times. The backup quarterback part of it, I needed to see someone respond tonight. I know both guys are limited. I know both guys are limited. I needed someone to respond the right way. And in football, there's going to be adversity. And Browning did that tonight. So that's that's what you want to see. Should he have done it earlier? Should he have played better sooner? Sure. But you look at the final numbers. The ugly interception is what it is. Obviously, it, it's something that can't happen. But I, I think he might have given himself uh, an edge up in, in that quarterback uh, quarterback battle. Maybe just a little bit, but but certainly an edge up. And, and we will see. We will see what they do if they look elsewhere. It's late in the game to add another quarterback. But I thought that this was kind of the night where if someone didn't emerge, if someone didn't step up, that that would be a real conversation. And so when he threw that pick, I was like, oh, this is a real conversation now. This is where we're going. And he responded five for five, 47 yards and two scrambles for 33 yards. That's, that's the reality of what we're looking at. 80 total yards of offense, boom, Jake Browning, just like that, to, to give the Bengals the lead with 50 seconds to go. So a lot of good things, some not so good things. Overall, though, the Bengals 0-1-1 one one in the preseason. I know you see this Rivertown Inquiry swag. Get there now, rivertowninquiry.com. And shout out to everybody that stayed till the end of this video. I will see you at Aces in Norwood on Tuesday. Orlando Brown Jr. is going to be there. It's our season kickoff show. And Cincinnati Bengals talk will be there. I will be talking with the Bengals star left tackle at 6 p.m. at Aces Pickleball in Norwood. So make sure you're there. It's going to be a blast. My man, Andrew Fox Miller, was working all the technological back-end things to make sure that we sound good and look good on Tuesday. So uh, be sure uh, to show up if you can. And if you can't, we will certainly post the interview right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk. We're cooking. We have some good things behind the scenes that are coming your way. So make sure uh, that you stay tuned. Keep supporting the CincyHat.com and Ted Karras. Oh, that's a spoiler. You'll see Ted on this channel very, very soon. Orlando Brown Jr. on this channel very, very soon. And for Andrew Fox Miller, I'm James Rapine. The Bengals are off on Saturday, but we will be back at it on Sunday, barring any breaking news, where we always have you covered right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk.